And we're live. We are live, the poops. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Wednesday, and I have no reason to sound this excited. Neither should you. But hey, man, we're going to get through it together. That's how we roll. <laughs> Wait, that's excitement? I could swear yeah. it was constipation. <laughs> that's because you're a sad, sad, lonely man, Pedro. <laughs> But you know what? I'm not going to hold it against you. Hey, beautiful people, what's going on? We're getting ready for another what our rock block of everything that we found going on in the world of Linux open source. Yes. You know, fair warning. If you hate fun, if you hate humor, run. <laughs> Aww. Go find another fair. show that might put you to sleep. <laughs> Hello. I found a few of back. those just because I was looking for someone to something to listen while I was at work, it's like, okay, let's find a pot cat. No, that, no, no. It's Pedro, like, that I, was your already... issue. That I've told you to quit looking for pod cats. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Artharen. We love you too. But yeah, it's, uh, it's very difficult to, to find because clearly some of them, some of the people involved are interested and they are very excited about what they're talking about. And that's kind of contagious. That, that, that helps a lot. But most no. of them, it's like, come on. Well. <laughs> yeah. <Re> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh... That took a minute, didn't it, Pedro? <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. It's like, okay. Well, you see, the thing is, is I noticed that immediately, and I started looking for that scene in OBS, and I'm like, I don't know. Oh, I'll get to it. And I forgot about it. I squirreled. Yeah. And... It's like when you when you came on Jitsi, it's like, oh, that that's still there from mm -hmm. Jordan last Saturday. So, okay. <laughs> Pedro, is your return video looking pixely? Or is it just me? No. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll exit and go back in for some reason. Kay. Okay. <laughs> well, we had a good run. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yay. Well, I think I'm going to... Go take a break a minute. <laughs> I will be back. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Kick the minute's ass. <laughs> oh, Pedro, you got to start watching um, Watchmen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying it by itself, and I'm also enjoying it by the people that are stupid. Still relentlessly screaming about it. And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't match the cartoon. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> These are the same people that spent eight years on Game of Thrones are like, I need something else to complain about. <laughs> oh, the book people that were just watching it ironically. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> Oh, I guess it's lunchtime at Disney. <laughs> it's not epic anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the um You better behave. You know what this fucking thing's got um sorry about the language kids. Uh not one piercing blue LED, but two. <laughs> Are they pointed right at your cordias? Oh, no, they're <laughs> down at the bottom of the rack. I, when, oh, I, okay. <laughs> when I first cut it on and lit it up, and it's like, I, oh, dude, if you, you bought that, like, I don't know who would put a rack mount router in their room, but if you did, oh, you'd have to get some tape out. <laughs> like, I can yeah, shut we're... the door, and you can come out of here, you go down a bit, and you take a left, and you go way down the hall, then you take another right, and that, like, leads into the door, into the... First part of the kit. You can see the blue against the hallway from there. <laughs> it's bright. 
There's no way to... You can cut all the other leads on, not those. <laughs> One. We have two surge protectors in our bedroom, and they have to be tucked under the bed mm. because they have two stupidly bright LEDs at the tips, too. <laughs> One of them should cut off, but once the power in the other one apparently is for if you plug uh, an LTE modem into it for remote management. Does it do remote communication by light signals? I, it's, <laughs> I'm just reading the specs, man. <laughs> I mean, sure, activity LED, that, that that's a thing. If it's connected to the Wi-Fi's or LTE... It blinks, but it doesn't need to be that bright. <laughs> doesn't need to be blue Ooh, either, Katana. man. <laughs> yeah. Back in my day, LEDs were good. And I used to say that. Then, like, you know, we swapped out the old new mixer for the new old mixer. And that 22-year-old mixer, bright blue LED on it. Like, but I, I think that wasn't even <laughs> blue back in the day. That That was just like... Painted blue. I could probably mm -hmm. scrape the blue, but it was so old it was dim. It didn't bug me. Sub Katana. So. Yeah, blue LEDs and blue laser pens. They're great, especially if you go to a party and there's a lot of balloons. Did pop, pop, <laughs> pop. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> when you volunteered your time earlier and you brought over the balloons full of confetti. Um, yes. I mean, glitter. <laughs> uh, but, oh, did did Portugal ever go through, like, the laser pointer phase in, like, the... Mm -hmm. I that... was in, like, fifth or sixth grade. <laughs> okay. I, they were everywhere. They were at, like, petrol stations and, like, here, buy mm -hmm. a keychain. It's like... And you could buy, like, the different tips that had uh, lenses with designs on them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. If you don't remember it good, you dodged that bullet. <laughs> it was very annoying. Yeah, my mom has one of those uh, blue pens and she uses it every now and then. Um, like the laser pens to like, okay, so wavelength, this is how it works. And blue wavelength is so powerful that you can literally do this. She takes a sheet of paper. All right. <laughs> I was at a website that sold ridiculously overpowered portable lasers, and I got she off the site. <laughs> uh, she's got one of those. <laughs> I remember in university, man, I mean, we were playing around with, like, argon helium lasers. Mm -hmm. Like, no, we don't need anything like that. I mean, I'd like it. I'm not responsible to own stuff like that. I know that about myself, though. That is why Vin. I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vin, it says what I'm sending to you is good, but my return video is crap. I, I don't know what's going on. Okay. It was... Um, I could try refreshing again. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna... That was the last we saw of Jill. <laughs> uh, over here, it seems to be fine. Ooh, fire. Oh. <laughs> fire. Hmm. It's still not great, but it's better than it was. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, I'm sending you 400, almost 500. Yeah. Well, it says I'm, I'm sending you 800 kilobytes. Hmm. Just this, I haven't had this happen in ages, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, there's one thing I... Well, it says I'm sending Ven 3,000 kilobits per second, and I'm getting 1,200? Oh, yeah. 900? 1,200? This is one of the reasons we're definitely going to be rolling our own. Because we're reliant on Amazon cloud instances and RNGesus as to which one. Okay, I'm getting... Jill is either... Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you're either sending <laughs> very still or something happened. <laughs> yeah, yes, still. So it looks like I'm sending... Uh around 400 and yeah you you send an extremely low bit rate compared to jordan and uh pedro that's strange because <laughs> are you using firefox no no i always use chromium have you tried using mm. chrome no uh-uh why don't you give mm -hmm. that a shot Joel? okay Let me see. Um, do we want to play the inspect the router game? Mine too. <laughs> I see two boxes doing three point something. Yeah, those are uh, part of the queue. Okay. They're allotted 50 megabits. Both your box and Jill's box are 50 down, three up. Mm hmm. So. Hmm. Should be a little higher than you. Let's see. 3.6. Mm -hmm. And 6.8 down, yeah. <laughs> Twenty-four volts. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I have everything offloaded. I mean, it's not. We're hitting like three percent of the CPU. I think we're good. <laughs> cool. Well, it's it's much. Uh, I'm actually fo wanted to test Firefox, and it's much higher. Firefox. My bit rate. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I'm curious. So why don't you try Chrome and you tried Firefox? Well, I need to... I, yeah, I realized I didn't have Chrome installed. I have everything else but Chrome. <laughs> so I tried Firefox. Right. Mm -hmm. no. Vivaldi. Uh, Vivaldi should work. Yeah. <laughs> It is basically Chromium. Yeah. With extra JavaScript. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have to install Chrome. Yeah, install the new yeah. Edge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've hmm. learned um, Chrome's always your best bet. Yeah, it is. I know. That's what I'm usually use using. Except um, for the entirety of doing this show. <laughs> well, Chromium. Cr I've been using Chromium and I've never had an issue. So. Uh... Yeah. It'd be interesting to see because we've always... Like, I don't know if you see on your return video, it's always, you, you can see, like, the, uh, like, in your carpet and on the edge of your chair. Mm -hmm. It's just a lower bandwidth. You should be pumping out, like, high bandwidth. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, because <laughs> I got fiber. That's 
That's why I'm confused. I've never had it go this low before in Chromium, and but it's saying, you know, I checked my internet speed and it's it's fine. Chrome's always a safe bet. <laughs> Uh, okay. That's why I have Jitsi running on a different profile in Chrome. <laughs> it's like uh, yeah. nothing touches Jitsi. Jitsi runs on its own profile and nothing else. <laughs> well, that's why I set up Chromium because I'm not signed in or anything. I keep it, you know, vanilla. <laughs> so yeah. all these years and I haven't had a problem a year and a half now. I've been al almost exclusively using it. Well, you never have a problem till you do. So yeah, I know it happens. Okay, so I'm gonna exit. I'm gonna go um, into Vivaldi because <laughs> I have you. I actually have used that before. <laughs> How many times could you've installed Chrome by now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do that now. <laughs> Chrome Beta did that to me <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, that's a miss. <laughs> it doesn't use... If it's working properly, it uses as much RAM as just about everything else. But, dude, I've had memory leaks with Chrome. <laughs> Okay, two things. Like, I mean, I've never had Chrome take down a system or even chug up a system, A, because I don't have a collection of tabs used as bookmarks. <laughs> that one was just the one bookmark uh, or the one tab. It was Jitsi. And it was enough to start sucking up all of the RAM. <laughs> the memory leaks do happen. Ah, oh, man, you like a really bad browsing experience on Android? That's a way to get it. Yeah. <laughs> now, the newer versions of Firefox are better, but... Ooh. Mm -hmm. You can actually use, like, uBlock Origin and um, I Don't Care About Cookies in Firefox for Android. And you basically get rid of all the nag screens and all the ads without having to um, root the device. Hello, Ryan Paul 64 Or you could be like a normal person, root your Android device and install Addaway <laughs> from F-Droid and just have a host deny file instead of having to run extra crap. Yes. Yeah. If you can root, that is, yeah, that is the preferable way to do it. Addaway just takes care of it all. There's no, and it's system-wide. It's not browser I was like, well, this works. It creates a prog. Oh, get bent. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I have uh, that away on the um, Shield tablet. Because that's my... I'm I'm in bed waiting to fall asleep. If uh, Nori happens to be busy doing something else, it's like... Hmm. <laughs> hey, Rohit. Yeah, we're just finishing up. <laughs> really um it just run like your standard ad block whatever like what is it you block yeah you block origin okay sell out huh running chrome <laughs> like everybody else yeah <laughs> <laughs> Man. That seems to be a little better, but it's still a little pixely. But as as long as I'm coming through, okay, that's okay. Just network issues today, maybe. <laughs> could be. I don't know. I mean, it's California. Something could be on fire between you <laughs> yeah. and me. <laughs> yeah, there could be an outage somewhere, and I, you know, that happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. Um... Um, well, 
you you're gonna leave us hanging it's kind of I'm, I'm well oh oh no no i was gonna react to patrick i have to uh i wanted to leave to to install chrome so that i could come into web to video and sound in chrome <laughs> hello ryan <laughs> yeah it's just <laughs> okay. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> Near PPC. Oh boy. Alt shelf. Yeah, uh, right. Don't worry. One day we'll all have satellite internet, and the world will be great. Man. Assuming the latency doesn't kill you. <laughs> it's going to be less than five or so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. You know, because <laughs> in space it doesn't have to travel through glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not really Google's fault, though. It's local municipalities. Taking that sweet, sweet cheddar from the incumbent <laughs> cable and telcos going, nah, man. Don't, don't. It's not it, corruption, it, it's lobbying. That's right. Best, <laughs> best system money can buy, man. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a network issue. It's I've got 300 up and down like I normally do. Okay. So the, the trick is to get really obsessed about something you have no control over. Yeah, I know. I, it doesn't <laughs> matter, but I just... <laughs> so yeah, right now it's showing... I, you're sending me 97 kilobytes, but I'm sending you 3,000. <laughs> That's fine. As, yeah. What you're sending as is what people is see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so this is the first time this has happened to me since I've been on fiber. <laughs> yep, I'm sending you something. I'm sending you a page of 400, almost five. Yeah. According to Jitsi, right now you're sending me 2,500 kilobits per second. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's according to Jitsi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 2.5 megabits. That's about right. Yep. Which, I mean, it's return video. It's not supposed to be Super HD. Oh, yeah, but it usually is. That's <laughs> and it's nice to be able to see you. <laughs> see, this is all... <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I... I'll tell you how to solve it, Joe. Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like it was when I started with LWW. Remember Hangouts? <laughs> I was like... That was worse than this, but of course, yeah, even even this at its worst is still better than Hangouts else was. We were using Discord. We no, never, but when we never used the, Hangouts on this show at all. Uh, you you sent me return video on Hangouts on my very first show, with you, in in that January with uh, you and Jordan. On this show, that Jordan, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was probably LGC Cause... Weekly. Yeah. <laughs> this show's been me and Pedro. No, the, the, my very first show on LWW was with Jordan because he was filling, because um, I was filling in for Pedro. So you're not talking about the very, you're talking about the very first show you were on. Yeah, I guest showed. Yeah, I was guest on. <laughs> Yeah. My memory sucks. sucks. <laughs> yeah, that was because I came in right at that transition when I was full time, came in the transition where you had changed over. <laughs> and we used, it wasn't, it was a, 
We were using Discord. I set the system up myself, so I got a no. pretty good idea of the topology of what we were using. Well, yeah, no, but the very first show, when I was a guest, you were testing out, it wasn't I Zoom, probably was... brought you in Hangouts, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a silly thing to argue. Well, I have pictures of it, <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was the one of the other... Um... Still going to argue it. Silly thing to argue. <laughs> We use, yes, we used Discord when when I first started full time. But the very first time I was a guest, we were using another what do you think, like another a and a half, two voice. Minutes? Okay, Jill. <laughs> no one's arguing against you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do remember when Project Cars was announced on Linux. <laughs> remember when Project Cars 2 <laughs> was going to be the one that had Linux right from the get-go? <laughs> <sighs> yep. I don't know, that's, uh, we're going to be talking about that Saturday. That's, uh, something that knee-jerk reaction you want to get upset about but at the end of the day yeah. they're giving out refunds it's cool <laughs> i mean it, it's still a bit of a dick move but at least they're giving the money back so yeah right <laughs> but is it still an early access <laughs> i thought it had been released maybe this was Well, Carmageddon mm -hmm. runs like poop, regardless of whether it's in Proton or, you know, na native Windows. <laughs> hey, man, I'll, I'll have you know Carmageddon manages a solid 12 frames per second in Proton. <laughs> With everything on low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... I mean, when you're back in Kickstarter, you don't know what you're going to get, but this is, this is like, again to the, like, we're going to deliver the Mac or Linux version later. Just run. Mm -hmm. Blasphemous is doing that too, but hey, they have been fixing the Linux version and you can actually get all the health upgrades without being locked in place in the game, refusing to take your input. So mm -hmm. they fixed that too. Basically... All the bugs that I ran into, I sent it back to them, and they went like, yo, try it out. Fixed. Cool. <laughs> Strider, I'll have you know, Raven's Cry has 100% bug parity with the Windows version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it runs just as well <laughs> on Linux as it does in Windows. <laughs> and that is the true true. Uh, I was actually surprised I was getting um, mm -hmm. around 60 with everything on the highest settings on this box. <laughs> I tried it when I put together the Threadripper system and I ran the benchmark and it crashed. So. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to get it to run without crashing on this one, El Cheapo, and Nori's PC. So. <laughs> I thought about doing a stream and it's like, it's just, I'm just going to let that one go. <laughs> Heck, I read that benchmark three times on El Cheapo in that stream. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were running that on AMD too, right? Yep. Yeah. RX 570. <laughs> so you put, you, you, you put it in the, put your parts together correctly. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I was only getting 36 FPS on average, but yeah. <laughs> I, I got to take this 2060 out of that dim slot. That's probably my issue. <laughs> It's not a socket one, Ben. <laughs> Let me pretend. <laughs> I don't judge how you put your computers together. Uh, we gotta call in Sebastian. <laughs> he needs to put our PCs oh. together. <laughs> FX Boy for EVA was asking about my chumby. Cool. Yeah, it's it's right there. It's 
it's not on it you don't really see it too well in the camera it doesn't show up too well yeah it shows um, up blue yeah <laughs> crp blue <laughs> yes <laughs> But it works. It works great. I did a lot of hacks on this one. This is the original Chumbi that's uh, soft and cuddly on the outside, and I also have uh, two other Chumbies later generations. <laughs> uh, does it have the really annoying CRT wine? <laughs> no, that was the the second one. Does yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one, you know, it's yeah, funny teeny the... tiny CRTs. They usually have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just well, wear earplugs one... like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first one didn't, but the, the the other generations were a little noisier. This one's completely silent. I love it. I still love my original. <laughs> but I did a lot of a lot of hacking on it, and actually, that's a, a, a that was special. That that's where I first started listening to Linux Gamecast. Was all that chumby. <laughs> that sounds like a personal <laughs> and... problem. <laughs> <Jupiter> broadcasting <laughs> personal problem <laughs> All right, let me go grab a refill and uh I don't think Jill's computer is going to explode or if is going to completely no. go down <laughs> it seems stable <laughs> yeah Just waiting to see if it blinks before we get in the middle of something because as is tradition Somebody goes down, we just keep going, man. <laughs> oh, I remember that. That was like right when you first got, what did you have, a power outage? Oh, yes. Yeah, we had uh, a, a, a car went into a tree, a, a power line pole. That was it. <laughs> and it hit a tree. <laughs> just for good measure, man. Maybe you go to assert <laughs> dominance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, nature. And you, yeah. light pole. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll take out the living and the dead. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to get something to drink. Okay. And we will get going. Sounds yeah. good. Ah, yes, the 3080. I am curious, because the performance boop from um, Pascal to Turing wasn't great. Mm. So, yeah, it would be very nice to see, like, something to rival the 2070 Super and the 1080 um, at, like, a more affordable price range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, RTX makes everything run worse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're talking performance here, Katana. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and unlike what Jensen says, it, it does not just work. <laughs> He was really insistent about that too when they did like the big presentations like look at the ray tracing and all that it's you keep saying it just works but everything you're showing on screen can already be done granted it's not you know ray tracing but you could already fake it well enough <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and me and Foxy have talked about all the, all the time. Probably I mean, Arthur. And... Yeah, is the Nvidia marketing guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Todd Howard from Bethesda. Yeah. Also, uh, another Mister. It just works. <laughs> yeah, we had, uh, you know, real time ray tracing cars cards back in the '90s, and they were expensive. Well, about as expensive as the RTX cards are now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Foxy were joking about that. <laughs> it's like, yes, uh, ray tracing looks great, and it gives some awesome lighting effect and some awesome reflections. It's still stupidly demanding on the hardware. Yeah, it's not that. Mm -hmm. th that's why we went with shaders and rasterization instead of ray tracing. That's mm -hmm. why. It Things kind of moved away 
from the tracing yep. bits. <laughs> <laughs> Using 1080 Ti oh. and giving Nvidia's prices. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the 1080 Ti and Jordan will attest to this. It runs real good. <laughs> yeah, Quintana and, and yeah, a lot of the SGI machines came with those cards. Um, I have one in my uh, deck Alpha. Those are those were nice. They were like twenty, thirty grand. Like a top end yeah. RTX card, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and got it from one of the studios. <laughs> yeah, ten seventy is um, that was like the card to get of the uh, the ten series, and the fifty seven hundred XT is AMD finally going. Look, we can be competitive. We're not beating anyone in terms of like raw performance, but we are competitive. Yes, yes, you are AMD. Do more of that, please. <laughs> yeah, the GT ten thirty is an interesting proposition if you really are. Well, if if you're stuck with a uh, with an Optiplex with a 120 watt power supply, and that's the only thing you can drive, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, like Jurassic Park CGI. <laughs> what did I just walk in on? <laughs> we were using an SGI ray machine, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to do ray tracing for the uh, LGC intros. <laughs> do, you, do you want it done before the heat death of the universe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long is that render gonna take? Oh, I don't know, three, possibly four years. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, dude, your mobile phone would crush that. <laughs> Man, SGI, they had such a lead mm -hmm. and they just blew it. Mm -hmm. But hey, man, at least uh, we get to play the N64. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I still want to mm -hmm. uh, get around to traveling to the alternate reality where uh, 3D effects made it into the Dreamcast. <laughs> Okay, so in that uh, parallel universe, does the Dreamcast still fail? It does, but it, it's got 3D effects <laughs> in it, so. <laughs> I just read the cliff notes oh, on that I one. See. Yeah. <laughs> so it basically becomes like the, the Mega Drive is what uh, people in the future take apart so they can scavenge the parts out of. <laughs> Dude, the only thing that killed the Dreamcast was Nintendo of Japan. Not Nintendo, jeez, uh, Sega of Japan. Sega, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you read the console wars, you're like, that was 100% Sega of Japan jelly. That Sega of America was crushing it. Yep. Yeah, RTX is... <laughs> you want to play Quick 2 at 40 frames a second at 1080p? I can do it. Yeah, I mean, it's faster than a 1080 Ti, but... <laughs> only only in RTX. There's one thing, though, man. I'll crush you. Man, like I what? guess having those two dedicated uh, RTX cores and Tensor cores actually makes a difference. <laughs> I guess technically, man, like 20 minutes. All the weight, all the build-up. To Quake 2 RTX. Like, eh, yep. right, whatever, I'm bored with it. It's like, I started, it's like, oh, look, it's rendering. I'm getting uh, 30 FPS at 720p low. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Remember, kids, make sure you put J24 when you're building a kernel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I started that up this morning. Went and did house chores and stuff. Came back and I'm like, why are we still building modules? <laughs> you did not pass a J. <laughs> I didn't, no. <laughs> really working out one thread though. Um, <laughs> Yeah, J17. <laughs> Anything that needs building is like J17. And I go to remove my hand from the mouse or, you know, take my hands away from the keyboard and it's already done. It's like, God damn. <laughs> yeah, it, 3950. It's a, a coming. <laughs> yeah, hurry up and release those new thread rippers. Yeah. <laughs> So I can't and they do buy say them. that these, yeah, these will, uh, the platform will be supported longer. <laughs> Don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm not one, as somebody who bought into the platform, used, mind you, got it mm -hmm. for less than $300. It was 280 Um, Yeah, I just want the 2950 for 300 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even need it, but it's like, well, no idea what I'd do with a 1920X processor. Can't really give those away. I'm like you, unless it's like somebody who collects processors, and I'm like, no, you got to use. It. But why would you get that as opposed to like what Pedro has, man? Uh, yeah, I bought like the middle of the range, um, Ryzen. Right. And it's like, if you want the performance for, say, gaming, get a 3600. If you want, like, cores and stuff, get the 3900 or the 3950 when it comes out. This was like, okay, I have enough money to buy the middle of the range. I'm going to go for the middle of the range. <laughs> it, dude, I mean, like a 2700 axe is still a brutally good all-around system, man. Yeah, until the 3000 series came out, the 2700X was the best, like, consumer-grade uh, processor. Right. Eight cores, 16 threads, uh, 3.4 um, gigahertz base clock with 3.8 or 3.7 turbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty good for, like, 300 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a good deal and plus i mean that's just you, you have a regular normal motherboard you don't have to deal with the fun and exciting things like yes. numa notes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no you can just run it off of like a 90 buck 80 buck um b350 or b450 done you, do. you don't need special power supplies with dual eps connectors yep. <laughs> i didn't even know that was the thing i was like really can i just plug one nope damn it um but if you do want to run four capture cards in one system, you gotta have those, those PCI, PCI lanes. lanes. Yep. Yeah, they need power. <laughs> Pedro learned it's like, oh, did you uh, play with your Black Magic card yet? I plugged it in. Mm -hmm. I installed the drivers. It sees them. I just haven't plugged in a laptop to see if it's working or not. <laughs> Just bring up the uh, Black Magic control and it's like, it says it's working. I'm good with that. <laughs> it's like, no, I had to look through the options. Like, okay, it can do 1080p 30. Good. Um, cool, 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 cool. 1080p cool. 30. Right. Ideally, I was thinking about that the other day, man. Like, if you're going to be doing capture, since that thing can just like straight up pull an 8 bit, it'll be fine. 720p 60, if you do like a bicubic scale on that through OBS, is going to look better than 1080p 60 and that other capture card by miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that USB. Uh, that's actually what I'm going to do is like plug in the Raspberry Pi, capture the Raspberry Pi through the um, card, and then try with the USB one to see if it works. <laughs> Blam. <laughs> I get the intensity pro for so if that thing just don't die on me right now by the way i'm looking at you um <laughs> yeah no the, the the 4k ones when i found that one inside that old desktop it's like okay let's see how much the 4k cost Ooh, that's 120 pounds all right later <laughs> still true 
Yeah. I'm sure it is, but d -d 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 that's a bit. <laughs> that's what you and Jill are coming in over. One of you is on the yeah. Intensity Pro 4K, mm -hmm. and the other one's a Deck Link Mini 4K. Mm -hmm. If you buy them new, they're 200 bucks. You go to eBay, and if you're patient, you can get them for about 100 Yeah. <laughs> Right. Jill, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you reading? Um, uh, I was looking for internet out, like, looking at the internet outage map. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Yeah, there, there, there is quite a bit of outages in uh, central United States, but they aren't fiber. <laughs> Eat the tea bag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Usually if it's uh like tea pigs are all gray, when I pull out the tea bag I go <laughs> because it's good. <laughs> You're a genuinely damaged human being, but we all know that. Um <laughs> Yeah, this really oh. shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone at this point. Yeah, I I'm, I'm playing the role of the audience right now. <laughs> I'm speaking on their behalf, Pedro. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them. I don't think I've ever. No, I, I'm sure we've all inadvertently eaten the tea bag when it like buzzed. Yes. Because <laughs> you, you, you get, close your mouth, it's like, uh, hello. <laughs> get about halfway down, then you just get that mouthful of the tea particle. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Do you have to do the math? I'm like, are we going to try to rinse this out or are we just going to deal with this? And I guess since Twitch is a bit more uh, finicky about uh, reckless self-endangerment, I won't tell you what else I did with tea bags in university. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is return audio coming back good for both of you? You've been noticing? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> Your audio is coming through. Good. Okay. <laughs> That's something I'm curious about. We're doing A-B testing because Jill's coming in over the network. Mm -hmm. VoIP. <laughs> yes. Into the interface is what I should say <laughs> with all the crazy things. And Pedro's coming in over a sound card. But I need to test. I'm doing packet capture analysis later this afternoon. Oh, Who wants to come joy. over and hang out? <laughs> 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 yeah, put that on the living room TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, we'll, we'll get some like warm milk and <laughs> everyone will take bets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Uh... See if this is gonna. I don't want it to be cranky like it got Saturday. So <laughs> let me just click these faders over to right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Locked and loaded. We are recording. Cool. Got to put away the down detector. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and just talk about some of the things that we found going on interesting in the world of Linux, open source, and all the other fun things in between. Fair warning, if you hate humor and or fun, cut the show off now, because, I don't know, sometimes we try to do that. By the way, I'm Vin. That's Jill. She's wondering, like, <laughs> what's wrong with my fiberglass internet and Pedro Mateus <laughs> somehow not Hello. suffering any internet issues all the way across yeah. the pond on the aisles Give it of time. The Give it time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. We've been doing this long enough not to come out of the gate and be like, come at me, fate. Fate's like, Zzz, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, pretend he just goes Atlantis on you. I'm like, well, get a boat. Um, 
<laughs> well, we're all singing now. <laughs> Everyone at home joining us Aww. live. A uh, little bit of a late start, but uh, we wanted to make sure it wasn't going to explode. But hey, we've we've given it a chance before we get into <laughs> it, though. Pedro, you didn't write anything, so come up with something on the spot. You've been up to anything new. <laughs> Uh, no, not really. I've been um, basically toying around with KDE Neon to make sure that everything in this box is up and running. One thing I noticed today, the Intel microcode is installed, and since there was that big zombie load thing that was um, oh, right. disclosed recently, it's like, oh, there's an update for the Intel micro... Why is that installed? <laughs> Well, you got to give Intel credit. They're like, hey, you know that thing we said we fixed a couple months back? Uh, yeah, that 10,000 series uh, CPU you're just putting out? Turns out it's vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> Intel, you should have made a big... Uh, qu you, Intel's just like, you're being toxic. Yeah. Don't... You're just, uh, Jilly Bean, what's going on? Oh, well, last week I said I had something cool in the world of Linux that was happening this week. So, yay. So yesterday morning, my chat with Brent Gervais on Brunch with Brent at Jupiter Broadcasting was released. I talked about my animation career, Linux Chicks LA, Scale, and the wonderful Linux community, and a lot more. So make sure to take a listen to that. And thank you so much to Brent. It was just so much fun. I loved it. It was awesome. Did you have a link for that? Nope. Yes. Because uh -huh. <laughs> we could use a link for that. Pedro, the yeah. only way to get the link is to send a self-addressed stamped envelope no. to Jill. I'll put it What's in there. What's a stamp? <laughs> Aww, snail mail. That's <laughs> I've been playing around with the router board 3011 UIAS-RM that showed up to my house Friday, mm -hmm. to which I went, oh, I have to try to get you working before Saturday and I'm not going to be home. Um, hard <laughs> on. Trying to get that set up. It, it, mm -hmm. It's an interesting piece of kit and I have, have no shame in saying I know nothing about networking outside of just like basic home stuff, you know, and doing Netgear, Bigquity, stuff like that. I, like stuff you can't forget about Cisco when I used to have to deal with that stuff. None oh, of that boy. applies. <laughs> this is... An edge router. This thing is meant to have switches plugged into it, not yep. internet mm -hmm. computer stuff. And well, I guess, you know, bonding and all that. But I'm learning about it. We're, we're learning. So I'm basically giving myself a free pass for like the next month. If anything goes <laughs> wrong, I'm like, yeah, there's this device. <laughs> but can't say I necessarily recommend it. Unless you're the type of person who's like, man, SSHing into my router is fun, then you might like it. Um, but I can say it's stupid cheap and it has enterprise features and you can get them used for about 90 bucks. So That's not bad. Nice. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you're not intimidated by something that doesn't have a WAN port, it's like everything's a WAN port if you're brave enough. Um, <laughs> you get to address whichever port you want to. <laughs> but it will let us do things like bandwidth management for multiple growing stuff that we're going to be doing here along with bonding as much as I can throw at it. So good on that. Mm -hmm. So let's get right into some of the stuff that we found going on, starting with Red Hat. Yeah. Red Hat. <laughs> yeah. Red Hat doesn't do anything. It's Red oh, Hat, wow. man. They're old. What, did they finally upgrade to like 2.4 kernel or what? Oh, well, this is I actually they're running really... 4.0 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so that <laughs> that's funny, Pedro. <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, latest version of RHEL 8.1. And the big news here is it now has live Linux kernel patching. And um, for, of course, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.1. And lots of people have been waiting for this in RHEL, like, like um, like SUSE has and Ubuntu, and being able to uh, update a machine's Linux kernel while it is live is a much needed feature. And this both saves down on downtime of systems and saves businesses lots of money. So this was very, very important. People have actually been waiting for this for a long time under RHEL. So really, yeah, and really it is awesome. Red Hat Enterprise <laughs> Linux and yes. production is their whole shtick. So this is a very welcome mm -hmm. addition. Took them a little while, but hey, it's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
It's Red Hat, though. I mean, d- d- yeah, <laughs> you. It'll happen. It's just who's going to blink first. But <laughs> fine, I suppose we get. I guess we have to. <laughs> I'm down with it. I'm happy with it. And now that I can run off and well, the real time. I know it's thick. I don't trust. It. Yeah. <laughs> Is it old? Yeah. But I know it's a good future. But now, now that you have your Red Hat 8.1 system installed. You can go, oh, man, I can't afford these licenses. So you install CentOS 8 and you turn it into a desktop. <laughs> and that's what our next story is covering. Uh, why would you want to do that? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We're going to get this out of the way. Don't use CentOS as a desktop unless you're being <laughs> forced to. Uh, if you're under duress, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this comes from, all this is going to be in our show notes. And this is a site that's covered from since 6, 7 and everything else, basically what you need to get everything together, you know, like VLC, GIMP, uh, web browsers, basic, basic stuff. And the repositories now, Steam, Steam, yeah. right? the bare <laughs> essentials. But I, I definitely want to say um, there's no advantage to be had running Scent as a desktop. Mm-hmm. You're not going to encounter that in the <laughs> wild. And if you do, run. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chrome and Sky, I, I, this is good that this exists. And I'm going to say for this reason, and this reason only, you might be stuck with this at work somehow. Mm-hmm. That's could be a, the thing. It, it's workstations. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it could also be work <laughs> laptops. You could run into a very real yes. situation of, hey, I don't want a Mac and I'm not running Windows. I want the Linux option. You're like, Guess what our only Linux option is? There's a ThinkPad and it has Scent on it. Mm-hmm. Have fun. <laughs> so there's that. Um, have you ever, yeah. outside of like learning, um, <laughs> bothered with, I, I was very, listen, if <laughs> Scent 8 was out when I was putting together this box, uh, that's what I'd be running right now. Uh, instead of that, I went to Debian. But out, outside of like use cases, I, no, I don't know. It's... Yeah. Pedro, are you dying to install Scent? You can put it on a laptop? No. <laughs> no. That, I mean, if you want something that makes Debian stale, I mean, stable, uh, look up to date. Scent <laughs> is where you go. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Pedro, you can... sound like an Arch user. It didn't ship <laughs> with it. Therefore, it's on pot. I, I'm installing the 5.3 kernel later this afternoon on Debian stale. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the I do see the appeal in the, having like the super, super LTS uh, in the RPM world. It, granted, you can go for Suzy, but between uh, going with Scent on the desktop and Suzy, I'll take Scent any day. Joe, so, what yeah, would you des- rather have, yeah. Joe? Would you rather have Scent or Gintu? Or Gentoo, um, uh, probably Scent. <laughs> Although I do like Gentoo as well. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I thought this was a really great guide for starting, um, for using a desktop on CentOS 8. You know, it was very easy easy to follow, and that's always been a, a challenge to get the desktop working on C- CentOS and, and Rail. Yeah, and this is especially good for all those animators out there using Maya, Moto, Blender, Renderman, etc. Because that's what all of the studios are using is RHEL and CentOS to do animation. And yes, now that Blender 2.88 is officially supported on RHEL and CentOS 8, it makes it a lot easier to install Blender. <laughs> that used to be a pain. And... Um, you know, usually when I'm doing animation, I usually use the light, lighter weight window managers on Scent for more memory efficiency using animation apps and then do my rendering in console. So so the desktop it doesn't have to be GNOME, <laughs> which takes up a lot of memory, but but it is it, it is good for, you know, the average user to use. <laughs> and I will say this about uh, Dead OI Beto. Uh this website, uh, if you want to talk about controversial Linux distro review websites, this is the one most people are talking about. It's been around a long time, and the dude has been mm-hmm. covering t- just about every distro uh, for the longest yeah. time. And it's like, oh, it's a article from Dead OI Meadow in the show notes. Let's go have a look. Oh, it's about installing GNOME 3 and Steam <laughs> on CentOS. 
All right. <laughs> yes. Well, then again, at the end of the day, do you really want to be the person that keeps track of controversy about Linux distribution spend? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Yeah. You need a hobby. I'm just going to say. <laughs> Void Linux Alpha Image is available, but mm -hmm. what's new about this? Well, it's uh, Void Linux has been around for a little bit, and Project Trident has also been around for a little bit, but Project Trident of BSD fame uh, is uh, actually mm. moving to Linux. And... Well, uh, they're using Void Linux as a base. They've put out uh, this first uh, alpha image is, as they say, it, it's basically just Void Linux with uh, the Lumina desktop. And the rest of the Trident stuff, they will be adding at a later date. So basically, if you don't know what Trident is, imagine uh, it's based on True OS, which is a rolling uh, release of FreeBSD. Mm -hmm. So if TrueOS is like a rolling release Debian, Trident is Ubuntu. And yeah. now they are moving to Linux, which makes that uh, whole analogy that much more adequate. <laughs> Man, yes. this, this looks yeah. like Aquaman's Linux. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, very focused on security, like your BSDs often tend to be. And what they're trying to do is basically, or what they were trying to do with BSD was to have something that was easy to install and easy to set up and very focused on privacy and security, et cetera, et cetera. And now they've basically had it with the, the BSDs. It's like, yeah, we're just moving to Linux because there's more happening there. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. going to pick on BSD, but yeah, I mean, you, not, 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 with that folk, with that much focus on security, <laughs> some things tend to, you know, not do anything. <laughs> well, so, hey man, there's something to be said about security through obscurity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and here we are atop our Linux soapboxes shouting yeah. about other things being <laughs> obscure. All right. Oh, that's right, baby. <laughs> oh, man, I was using Linux before it was mainstream like it is today. Um, you can use Linux to power your home and not in a frightening mm -hmm. and or horrifying manner, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I mean, it depends on how you feel about the color uh, slightly off-white with uh, some red buttons and a red lever. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's uh, the open source smart home or Kendall smart home, as they call it themselves. Uh, it is a smart hub, uh, smart home hub and the associated devices, because it's not just a hub, um, specifically focused on privacy to the point where they will actually uh, fuzz your uh, internet connection with Don't garbage lie to me. and gibberish. Don't lie to me. Every one of those devices look like a bad 3D render. But they're not. They're not. They're 3D <laughs> printed. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, it, they will outright fuzz I'm just saying, your tell ISP. Me if, you, if you saw that in a Kickstarter, you'd be like, it's 3D render. Yeah, if you didn't see it in the video right. and like uh, right. people actually interacting with it, yeah. I am not <laughs> knocking on it at all. I think that's a very interesting aesthetic, but that jumped out at me. I was like, that doesn't look real. Oh, that is real. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it was clearly just printed out directly from the 3D renders. And yeah, the, they do everything about privacy, and you can see in the video that they're actively trying to like disguise all the smart home stuff. And yeah, they will uh, outright try to confuse your ISP uh, by just filling it with garbage calls. They're trying to disguise to... stuff the same way you do, like yeah. you just spill something on the floor, you put a towel on top of it, and you're like, ah, you don't know it's there. <laughs> But why is the no? It's just an art piece that's on hey, my thing. No why is there a wire to IoT there? device behind the curtain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, open source smart home is uh, is a good idea, mostly because what we have right now uh, is our choice of wiretaps. Do we want Amazon wiretap, Apple wiretap, or the Google wiretap? Mm -hmm. uh, I actually, this is this is really wonderful you know to be able to create a self-hosted smart home is uh, so needed right now and um i love the design of the devices uh actually i think that would be cool for my uh for me and steve in the future when i get a buckminster fuller a geodesic dome for our backyard <laughs> and this would be awesome <laughs> make a smart home <laughs> geodesic dome <laughs> 
<laughs> Where are you at on IoT, Pedro? Tell, tell how, <laughs> how far have you, like, even inadvertently ended up getting? Mm -hmm. I'm setting up Raspberry Pis to, like, control yeah. just lights or to, like, flip on a switch every now and then, but that's about it. Joe? Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I just, I can't get into the Amazon and Google uh, universe of, of, uh, you know, um, home devices. I, for security reasons, um, I have played with the Raspberry Pi in the in the open source version of uh, Amazon's, um, and that is really cool. But honestly, for my lights, we just use traditional timers. You know, mechanical timers. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it's. <laughs> I think for me, at the end of the day, I, I don't have a lot of IoT stuff. I really don't, just because I consider it lazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, I, I cannot in with clear conscience go, I'm worried fiercely about my privacy while I'm carrying around an Android device. I'm like, any alphabet yeah. agency in any country can light that Miss. thing up anytime they want. Let's just be real. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I went looking around the house because I was looking at, you know, the Candle Smart Home. I was like, well, what about the thermostat? Because I have two Nest thermostats. And hey, man, they might be privacy vampires, but... You know what? I got up this morning. I'm like, Burr, it's cold. Had one hand reach yeah. up to a tablet, open the Nest up. I'm like, boop, cut on. That's what I use it for. Uh, I do have some Wi-Fi bulbs. I think I have like four or five of those. <laughs> but yeah, man, like I, I don't know what else. I have an Alexa, but it's not hooked up to anything. <laughs> if, if I told Alexa to do something, it would tell me to go pound sand, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't think of like any smart, I mean, the thermostat I looked at, the parts list is pretty decent. I don't know if I necessarily want to tango with something that, yeah, I just don't want to have to ever explain that to my home owner's insurance. So <laughs> <laughs> like I would be embarrassed to call them and be like, you know what? I deserve this. I'm just going to get this one out of pocket. Um, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm down with that. Mm -hmm. What do we have up next? Oh, Chrome OS. Uh, so yes. Chrome OS 78. Uh, it's, uh, it's been released, but, you know, this being Chromebooks, it may be a while for your particular vendor to get off their posteriors and actually do something and push it out to the Chromebooks proper. Uh, the new version that comes with virtual desktops, because, I mean, it's been Linux-based since day one. Why didn't they have those from the get-go? Uh, yes. Separate <laughs> OS and browser settings, which is odd, but I guess at that point, uh, on that same thought it's like oh i guess they are further uh, further distancing themselves from like the whole browser as an os concept and just having the no this is a serious operating system it happens to be running basically entirely off of chrome but it is still a uh, true operating system in the full sense of the word mm -hmm. uh the they say that uh, 9 to 5 Google says that you should keep an eye on your Chromebooks uh, in the coming weeks. I've been basically refreshing the uh, Acer R11 Chromebook that I have. It's like, yo, we're going to get an update anytime soon? Because I've been desperate to try and get some actual performance mm -hmm. out of the Linux apps. And yeah. that's still not there. That did very much not there yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the good thing is, is that uh, Chrome OS 78... Um, backs up uh, Linux apps and files, and they can be mm -hmm. saved to local storage, external drive, or Google Drive. And what's nice is that copy can be restored when setting up a new computer. Yay, like all other, like their other, like their Android devices and whatnot. So that makes sense for Chrome OS Linux apps. And Christini uh, GPU support is now enabled by default, making your experience a lot more clean and zippy. So that's really, really good news. One thing mm -hmm. I like that they're going to be rolling out is it will tell you when your Chromebook is going to be EOL'd. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, Google have, uh, there was a bit of news that they have expanded the supported life of the current generation of Chromebooks. It's like, y'all get another year. And then we'll see. Mm. <laughs> we got to think, you know, because they always have the flagship Chromebooks that are like over a grand. 
pixels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter. As, as somebody who's bought flagship Nexus devices, they're like, yeah, whatever, torch them. So yeah. Keep that in mind. No, I, I bought that R11 because it's like, okay, I want a Chromebook and I want something that's really nice and not stupidly expensive. Mm -hmm. That one was basically mm -hmm. what every single website said. Yeah, this is the one you want to get. <laughs> what I'm really looking forward to is, I just hadn't got around to it. We needed some other stuff is getting that Acer Chrome tab for the studio because mm -hmm. being yeah. able to run multiple apps, the I can get away with more than this repurposed Android tablet. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's as close to a Chromebook as I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you ever catch me with like that thing with a keyboard attached, just take me out. Something's went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so just call the police because you've been kidnapped and someone's telling you to play it cool. Let, let's just, <laughs> get, get, get the church, man. Police aren't going to be much use. Um, <laughs> hey, Freddy Cat from afar. What is it? Yes. So uh, Freddy Cat uh, is. An interesting service. Uh, it basically allows you to uh, follow a bunch of different people and a bunch of different companies across a bunch of different social platforms without having to sign up for any of those uh, social networks. Uh, yeah, the, their big thing is like, okay, you don't want to create accounts for Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, what have you. Well, you can just feed everything into Freddy Cat. There's extensions for Firefox and for Chrome, and you can also uh, basically build it yourself. Uh, the and then just start feeding it. Okay, I want to follow this person on this network, this person on this network, or the same person across multiple different networks, and it'll let you do all of that from a single place, which is nice, I think. <laughs> Well, um, Yay. <laughs> my only, I, I get what the intended use for this is, but Jill, what, what did I title the story? <laughs> Distributed stocking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, like Pedro said, I think it's nice to have, have um, not to have to log on to follow feeds. Calm That's down, actually... stocky McStalker <laughs> pants. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and um, honestly, I like having a unified notification area in my browser that doesn't pop up whenever there is a new post and I can check when I went to. And I always have browser notification pop-ups turned off because they are so annoying. But this is nice because you can, you know, check it just when you want to. And I've actually been using the Freddy Cat plugin uh, to follow YouTube and Twitter streams and I'm enjoying it actually quite a bit i'm going to continue to use it and also kudos on the art design layout and colors of the website very nice very very pastel. good job very professional so but much there... pastel yeah it, it looked like the mid 90s walked into that website and fell over dead <laughs> oh but the Freddy cat logo is so cute it's a cat <laughs> yeah it's a cute it's a square two cat. cats are evil <laughs> two, two modern the gateways kitties. to hell um <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> it, it's definitely a thing, but I could see that being that it's one of those things, you know, like that's for, that's really cool. That's great. That could help people do, and it's going to be used for the wrong thing. Um, well, of course it is. I mean, yeah. that's everything on the internet, right? Welcome to the internet, yeah. kids. Um, <laughs> you put out so. a really useful service and everyone will use it for the wrong things. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag shot roulette. Uh, the register. Anyway. Yeah. NPM today now stands for now pay me. No, it means for, hey, man, I need six gigs of depths for this one little thing I'm trying to install. <laughs> That's what it really stands for. Um, but they had an issue because, you know, kind of ads started showing up when people were doing NPM install on things. Well, the maintainers, they've kind of rolled in and they're like, yo, we got to get this sorted. And they've come up with a better solution than nothing at all because they kind of went scorched earth on that. Like, you do not do this. And I was like, man, okay. Or, you know, the spammy stuff that had the internet. And I think rightfully everyone's like, I don't want to have to deal with this when I'm installing stuff. So now, mm -hmm. what, what would you call this, Jill? Is this like an opt-in type deal? 
Yeah, I think it's definitely opt in because you have to type it out to get to the URL um, of the project to, um, you know, donate money. And I think this is actually a brilliant way to do that. And it gets rid of those uh, visually annoying ads. So yes, is, and it's the yeah. unified way to do that. And you won't yeah. have like mm -hmm. 200 different competing monetization schemes going on in NPM alone. And yeah, like you said, Ven, is it <laughs> spam? Just, yeah. oh, uh, I'm going to have to install like 200 different um, dependencies to build this one thing. And every single one of them was going to spam me with an ad that I have to hit uh, return on. It's like every single one of them. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, I think they're going to get creative, man. We could add some like ASCII animation. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I think that is exactly why the NPM people went, nope. No. <laughs> Put the kibosh on that right now. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Yay. Um, so I, I posted this on Twitter with uh, a, a very simple title of this exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, it, this is a simple Mac KVM. So yeah, getting Mac OS to work in a virtual machine with KVM, KVM acceleration can be a tricky and definitely tedious process until this came along, uh, the Mac OS virtual machine in QMU. And with a little QMU knowledge, uh, know-how and setting up a partition and configuration, you can get Mac OS 10 running quickly by running two Mac OS simple KVM scripts. And it it worked actually really beautifully and fast. It was the fastest I ever got a Mac OS image installed in a virtual machine. And that includes on VirtualBox and VMware Player. So I was really impressed by it. And it ran really fast. Mm. Really yep. worked really, really well. And the thing that they do is uh, the mm. install script, it basically pulls down the ISO, turns it into the image file that you need. It does everything like the really horrible mm -hmm. stuff. If you've ever tried to set up a uh, Mac OS VM, it's horrible. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it does all of that in the background. And then all you have to do is tell QEMU to create yourself the disk image for mm -hmm. where the virtual hard drive is going to be and then launch the system with a couple of uh, flags that they also uh, show up in the GitHub page. And this is the big one. Uh, if you <laughs> don't want to uh, have to figure all that out uh, from the command line and you like to use Vert Manager because GUI, yes. <laughs> you can do that too. You, they even Yay. give you just like make.sh dash dash add done. Yes. <laughs> But why, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to run Adobe... sometimes you need... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to run some Adobe uh, products, um, I, I run them under Wine, but, yeah. but you can... You answered you know... that question next. <laughs> yeah. um... Yes, yes, but a lot of people prefer to run it in Mac OS rather than I in Windows. I understand people are dumb, Joe. You don't have to explain this to me. You can run it in Wine. And sometimes dumb people have uh, certain positions in certain organizations, <laughs> yeah. and they insist on using their MacBooks if, at work exactly. when uh, they're mm -hmm. told not to, and then we are expected to... Uh, Fix the issues that they run into. And what, what would running yeah. Mac OS in a VM fix? Uh, actually getting uh, to replicate the issue and seeing exactly what's causing yeah, it because that person is not going to be able to tell you anything about yeah. anything. So it's like troubleshooting and debugging a um, Linux game in a VM from Windows? <laughs> Thank Except you. Except it's next, actually um... more... Uh... <laughs> 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 contrived <laughs> oh so this is awesome this is a shortwave radio and personally i've always enjoyed having a dedicated radio player app and shortwave which is an on its first public beta and the successor to gradio is definitely one of the best it's really easy to use and right when you launch it it asks you do you want to import your files from gradio or or um, search for radio stations and the database is actually really um, it had everything in there even all the 
the hard to get uh, stations no, it didn't. that I listen to. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, the, all Portuguese the, all radio the... stations were not oh. there. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I guess that is an exception. <laughs> so it had all my kraut rock and ambient uh, synth music. So, but shortwave's killer feature, and one I've always wanted, is the ability to easily save individual songs, including its metadata for listening later. And in fact, when you listen to a radio stream, it is automatically recorded in the background so you can save songs afterwards. All you have to do is hit a little download button and it saves it in your download folder, the song with the title. It's really awesome. And this beats all the years of recording radio streams and XMS and Audacious and then spending lots of time splitting up the songs and naming them. That was always a pain and time consuming. So shortwave you know, uh, solves all this. Mm. And, um, you know, it includes all the important Gradio features. And uh, like I said earlier, you can import your data um, into uh, shortwave. So it's a win-win all the way. I'm going to be using this a lot. <laughs> well, for those of us, uh, well, I, I'm glad that you're so gung-ho on piracy. Uh... <laughs> no, no. Oh. Yes, that's what you just described, Jill. Yeah, yes, yes, point. but a lot of my music like, is so rare, you can't you get it. And you didn't even start. You're like, well, here's how I used to pirate before I went yeah. <laughs> Yes, put it in the no. past. Distance yourself from it. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> it's a pretty I, cool thing, I, man. I, and, yeah. uh, you know, hey, it's got flat packs, so you can try it out. You don't have to build it. You don't have yep. to worry about yes. it. Just go get it from Flat Hub. Like, boom, mm -hmm. see if it works. And if yeah. it's your thing, you're, baby, you're. So yeah. I can tell you for a fact that, yes, the flat pack does work because that's how I tried it. Right uh, but yes. it's, um, yeah, I, I went looking because as someone who set up a little desktop thingy to play Portuguese radio stations back in Windows, I was like, okay, uh, can I just have the Portuguese radio stations? And I look through the database. There's a couple of them in there, but most of them are just not. I so, don't know. I, yeah. I'm kind of interested in Strider. He, he just like and warned everyone that he's about to throw a radio. So, um, all right. Good on you, buddy. Hey, man, we got some news. Are you going to launch it some rockets? No. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to launch it in joy because hey, Microsoft. Oh, Analytics. so. Yes. So this one I did not see coming. <laughs> yes, I was surprised, too. So last week we talked about Microsoft Edge coming to Linux and now Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection Antivirus is coming to Linux next year. Uh, this was also announced at the Microsoft Ignite conference um, this year in Orlando. And, you know, actually, you know, and, and, and it hurts me to say this a little bit. Actually, Microsoft Defender is one of the better antivirus packages for Windows and Mac. So this makes sense from a business point of view to protect their Azure cloud infrastructure. <laughs> and Microsoft having to create a container to protect Office 365 from viruses is actually both brilliant and pathetic at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, it you know, it, it uh, they have a, a plugin that helps protect your Office 365 files, and it used to only work on Edge, and now it's it's coming to the other browsers. So that's good as well. <laughs> Well, it has to kind of come to Chrome on accounts of, you know, Edge yes. Chromium. But yes. um, the last thing that Linux as a platform needs is stories like those of MacBooks being used in Windows environments as uh, zombie servers to infect all the Windows machines around them. And as someone who has to deal with ATP at work... Mm -hmm. You know what? There's worse. I have seen yeah. much worse when it comes to uh, malware protection. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's the best, but... It's one of the better I've ones. seen much yeah. worse. <laughs> uh, it is... Uh, <laughs> ATP yeah. is manageable, and the web interface that they have is actually... Makes it very easy to pinpoint exactly what went wrong on whose machine and at what time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the brave new Very world. Good. I mean, as much as uh, everyone's like, ah, it's horrible, which I agree, it's buggers off. Come on. Uh, mixed environments. That's the reality these days. You know, you're not going to see, yeah. I mean, if you can see <laughs> yeah, Linux in a shop, true. it's also going to be 
you know, you're going to have Macs in there and you're going to have a lot of Microsoft stuff in there because they've been spending money to make sure they're in there and they're still fighting for it. So having this tool available, I do not believe is necessarily <laughs> a bad thing. Yes. No, 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 it really isn't. So it's r really strange, strange, yes. strange times we live in. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, uh, Balmer just had an aneurysm and he's chasing a kick. He's still chasing that kick. <laughs> and still sweating profusely. <laughs> it is. Developers, developers, developers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive into a slice of pie. But before we do that, a little bit of shameless self promotion. If you want to support our nonsense each and every week, there's a bunch of ways to do that with Patreon, Libra Pay. We got a merch store. We got shirts. They're not as cool as my sweater, but hey, man, PayPal. <laughs> we got a wish list for the studio. Jordan's got one. Pedro's got one. Jill's got one. We even take magic internet money mm -hmm. that allows us to stay loud, live, and independent. Come to you each and every week and podcast form. We're on the YouTubes and all that. It is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. We do thank each and every one of you for that. And if you got a minute, be like, hey, man, I'm going to sign up. You can spare like four quarters a week. It helps us out. Greatly. A lot. Yeah. So, a lot. <laughs> well, yes. As I always say, and I don't joke around, I mean, doing a show at this size and especially mm -hmm. the Schemecast Weekly without, but first, you know, it's like, hey, we're about to tell you mm -hmm. about this. But first, um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to have to get to the point of our having to do that. And uh, everyone's been gracious enough to keep us from doing that. So I think we're going to keep trying to, right? Yeah. Yep. And Definitely. if you join us on Patreon, we get a couple of rewards for that. You get some early access to a gang of stuff, access to our Discord. Um, if you like what we do, we do hold a production meeting an hour before the show on Saturday that we invite everyone to come hang out in and share your thoughts, hints, allegations, and things better left unsaid. <laughs> oh, and you get your name in the credits, which the credits are going to yes. be wrong this week. Because I was busy. I <laughs> you have oh. been warned. <laughs> oh. You have been warned. Maybe we can afford some better art too. But until then, <laughs> that was a, slice of <laughs> a slice of paint. I mean pie. pie. Pink pie, baby. Uh, same thing. Wall candy. Uh, detecting people with a raspberry pie, a thermal camera, and machine mm -hmm. learning. That's right. Ceiling pie is watching you do something. Predator flashbacks, mm -hmm. man. I. <laughs> well what's really the point of this Pedro other than I just want to have like a f little baby not FLIR I want it to look like a FLIR camera and I want to scream get to it a chopper it's basically this person's uh, attempt at doing some machine learning on the Raspberry Pi despite everyone else on the internet going you have more powerful processors and GPUs if you don't uh, stay with the prototype toy boards. I, I'm just going to say I would not put a gun in this thing's hand looking at yeah. our... Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of the things I found really interesting uh, in what he says is like, okay, so I tried two different cameras, like a regular, uh, regular optical camera and a thermal camera. And with the optical camera, uh, uh, the most that he could uh, get was like 91% accuracy in detecting the presence of people. What? The th Yeah. 91% on the mm -hmm. optical camera. On Man, the okay, thermal we're, camera. We're, we're looking at this right now, though. Um, that's the thermal camera. Yeah. yeah. On the thermal camera, he Here's got 99%. Camera. Yeah. 99% accuracy in detecting whether or not a person is there. And the other interesting bit about the thermal camera is if you see that little uh, yellow bit on the bottom right of the pictures... Mm -hmm. That is the heat coming out of the Raspberry Pi CPU. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's causing just that little bit of interference. <laughs> I, I, I would take a bet against trying to sneak past this thing. Yeah, no, 99% uh, accuracy on a thermal camera. It's like a really yeah. low res um, uh, camera, too. It's like 640 by 480. Oh, yes. And yeah it 99 percent accurate it will detect no that's a person that's a person that's a person that's the heat off coming coming off of the what i would like to pie. find out that's is a person. how does this thing deal with a completely static background i mean what exactly is it you know able to pick it up doesn't mention that in the, uh, yeah. the article because <laughs> you know when i see something like this motion detect detection I'm like mm -hmm. go get me a fan watch this <laughs> it's like a fan and something really hot pour some water on it 
<laughs> That's really cool. Aww. I mean, that, I think this falls into that category of like, it'd be something to play around with on a weekend, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, definitely. <laughs> it, it's really not that expensive. So, yeah. <laughs> thermally detect your cat. Yeah. And you can you yeah. can have it turn on, turn on and off the lights, like we were talking about the smart home earlier. This could be used in that. Yeah, it sees a person walking into a room. It goes, oh, that's a person. Lights on. It sees the yeah. cat walking into a room. Okay, that's the cat. Lights stay off. <laughs> then the cat just pees on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't put it in your cat's bed. It's, it's just what a cat does, man. Hey, man, tell us... Uh... What's your cat's up to? We got an easy way to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. The best way to do that is to uh, actually yank out that parasite that's now growing in your brain from uh, being a cat owner and sending it to us uh, <laughs> by, a, I don't know, snail mail, uh, <laughs> bringing that back. Or you can just tell us about it on Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh, no, you can tell us about it on LinuxGameCast.com. The contact button, there's a forum. Dash weekly yes. forward slash org. <laughs> <laughs> meow, meow. <laughs> and yeah uh you fill out the form make sure you send to lwdw there's a little show selection box that you uh pick which show you you want to send your feedback or your hate mail to or if you're looking for some relationship advice you can ask jordan mm-hmm. it's yeah <laughs> we offer that particular service too <laughs> i also yeah. throw this out there uh like maybe a link or a description of like a project or something like hey man i'd love, love to come talk to you be careful with that. You'll trigger the spam golem, and it do- doesn't play around. Um, uh. I had to give it a mention last week because a developer had to go out of their way. And they're like, by the way, this thing thinks I'm a spam bot and includes everything I say don't include on that page. I'm like, no, you are. Um, that or you can't read. So please, please, for the love of robotic kitties everywhere, keep that in mind. Aww. <laughs> So we talked about something that I looked at yes. and immediately went, I don't remember talking about that, Aww. but Pedro does. Yes, 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 I do. So we talked about my old Linux. Uh, it was, I think, in episode 160, 160. 61, mm-hmm. 60. Okay, cool. I wasn't that far mm-hmm. off. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, the developer behind my old Linux sent us some uh, feedback. I just found this and I thank you again for mentioning my Linux. By the way, Pedro. Yes, no, that is my name. Uh, I was really, 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 really <laughs> offended about the Crunchbang comment the first time. Lol, 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 lol. Smiley face, uh, tongue out face. Uh, you guys have too much fun. It's a joy to watch your channel. How dare you? Uh, thank you, Jill, for giving Mayo a chance. I really appreciate it more than you know. Thanks again and take care. Just subscribe. Should have done it earlier. Yes, you should have. Uh, so, yeah, I stand by no. what I said because, <laughs> yeah, if you're going to offer a distribution that is basically Debian with Openbox, that's what Bunsen Labs is there for. It's the, like I said at the time, the continuation of uh, Crunchbang. Mm-hmm. Um, Says the, only... says the guy running Ubuntu with KDE pre-installed, calling itself a distribution. It, it, <laughs> there's a significant difference. No. <laughs> there's a reason it's not an official spin. It it's not an official enough. spin. <laughs> ah, no, actually, the creator got kind of, you know, butted heads with the uh, Ubuntu uh, board. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the... <laughs> what did he do, install <laughs> a flat pack? Uh, no, he refused to abide don't, by... Don't, uh, honestly, don't care. Um, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the the big thing about Myo Linux is that it lets you... Uh, it, the thing was, it lets you, like, set up your own partitions. In fact, it expects you to, because it mm-hmm. doesn't do that automatically. And it's like, the whole distribution itself is built on making it your own out of the box. And I guess, yes, if you did offer some part- automatic partition uh setup thing it would sort of defeat the purpose a little bit but i'd take that any day honestly oh well yeah <laughs> so this was the lightweight dev one distro we talked about in march yes and i still have it running on one of my laptops in fact i it's the one i used yesterday to do my show notes ironically enough so <laughs> that that was awesome and i've been really enjoying it um just it runs nice and fast on a, a very old laptop. Just runs beautifully. 
And I've always loved these, you know, do-it-yourself distros. And uh, Debian is one of my favorite distros for doing that. So, de so uh, Mayo is perfect. <laughs> I'll just keep running Debian because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you don't want I mean, it to be there free is of something... System D? <laughs> no, Jill, I like my stuff to work. <laughs> I'm not a hipster. I'm not going to cut off my nose to spite my face. <laughs> oh, I actually got into uh, Arthur and posted a link in Discord earlier today about the whole system D thing and how many people are using SysV in it. Mm -hmm. And I, mm. I basically went to the top of the thread and I started reading the whole thing. It's like, wow. All right. Okay. <laughs> right now, the, the, the only way you're going to stop system D currently is with a time machine. So Pretty much, yeah. The, the only people... <laughs> arguing about that online at this point are the people who are going to go to the next thing to argue about online because that's what they do they are yeah. void shells of creatures that need to argue on the internet and this yeah. just happens to be their thing but we gotta get out of here mm -hmm. so ladies and gentlemen we bid you later ah <laughs> See ya. Those are wrong credits. <laughs> yes. I, I, <laughs> They're not even the right size. Painfotainment. <laughs> oh my. They're not the right size. They're not in the middle of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> They're the wrong show. <laughs> but hey, the, it's this like bit is still everything relevant. I described before I did this at the beginning yes. of the show. There's our, our beautiful. It patrons our executive producers and our producers we love you all and yes that producer <laughs> list keeps on growing and every single one of you are awesome seriously <laughs> <laughs> i don't Yay! know why you thought this was a good idea but we certainly appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> yay i don't know my brain's still kind of pissed off at me about the router thing oh <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a great job, then it all worked well. Of course I did a great job, Jill. I don't have that <laughs> stuff. Yes, I know you don't. <laughs> and I'm very happy that halfway through the show, my return video came back to beautiful. So it was a internet issue. Well, with this router, <laughs> I can catch your band with mid-show, too, so... Oh. <laughs> Ven can actively mess with you. Frank! Yes. What are you doing oh, here? Right. Shouldn't you be in choir practice? Well, what are I, you doing? Man, I thought we were going to get a new word added to the English language. Dang it. <laughs> Almost. 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 We were so Almost. Close. Oh, there's so the close. Death Star. Frank and the Death Star go hand in hand. We love you. Bye bye. There we go. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> ah, katana, yeah, ins in ins mod sound blaster. What? <laughs> You're on interrupt seven. You yes. better work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do, do, do. Do, 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 wow, do. that's purple. What is? <laughs> Vivaldi. That's one thing I don't like about Vivaldi. I'm like, why, why, why are you changing colors, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I have dark mode enabled system wide, and that one is purple. <laughs> Man, so. I was watching what effectively is lectures on microtech routing and stuff like that because all this stuff's enterprise there's no like how do i do this at home mm -hmm. this is like how do mm -hmm. i deploy this in my isp yeah. so i gotta watch all this and i needed something to keep me occupied so i compiled 414 from source with xfce built that mm. get installed 
That new compositor's junk. <laughs> Come on, people have figured out GLX compositors for a long time. It... Come on, XFC. Dude, <laughs> this was like, hey, man, all right, I can finally ditch Compton because, you know, this thing's got to, you know, back it. Man, like Tomb Raider took like a 30% performance hit. Oh. That's that's like Meta City compositing back in the Gnome 2 days. It, it Come was on. Like, what? <laughs> and I, I was like, okay, let me just like, kill the compositor and like let's just bring up. Then it went back to normal. I was like, it's a compositor. You know what? I'm just going to go back to 412. <laughs> also, the color profile for the monitors. It detected my Nexus 10 plugged into the system for profiling. Nice. <laughs> Just not the monitors. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a camera there. I'm just going to profile that camera there. <laughs> That's what it did, Brad. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> what it did. <laughs> uh, I'm like, how yeah, about wouldn't even angry. I was like, that's so stupid. It's funny. I'm going to tell everyone that on the show Wednesday. <laughs> It'll be good show material. <laughs> ISA, man. Hey, you got to remember jumpers. Dip switches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was life. Yep. First uh, PCI card it was uh, that I ever had that came out of the box I thought it looked it was strange and I didn't trust it was my 3dfx voodoo one pass-through card uh, didn't have mm -hmm. jumpers on it uh, <laughs> yes. jumperless card that I was like how's this even going to work I don't that, that, how do I set the IRQs and it worked and yeah it was overlay <laughs> so I I yeah I'm I I'm happy we don't have to live with the uh, uh, pass through. I use my Hollywood Real Magic cards. You know we're all overlay to play uh, MPEG two video DVD. <laughs> and that was it's nice not to have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> yeah, plug and play was a thing. <laughs> I think everyone on Windows called it um, plug and pray. Yeah, for a good reason. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm really not going to miss jumpers anytime soon because last time I touched a jumper was on an old ID, uh, three and a half inch drive. Oh, I, I thought oh. it called the cops and reported you. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's like my fingers all of a sudden because yeah, the last time before that I had touched it, I was like fourteen, and yeah, I could just with my fingers reach in, pull it out. Tick, that was fine. Mm -hmm. Then I grew up, and then I had to pull one out. It's like, oh, right. They don't fit there anymore. Listen, man. <laughs> the only time you need to pull a jumper is right after you've cut all your fingernails off. And you're like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll see how this is. Oh, tr true that, Linux Kinneru. <laughs> I still Flat have head that. screwdriver. It's like, yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't even have to deal with it now. Like, the basics of, you know, we have things like, Cable select on ATA, like spinning yeah. drives. Like, you don't have to set, you know, master slave or anything like You don't Won't do that. You have no idea what a SCSI Terminator is. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is that? Some knockoff James Cameron movie? No. That was the thing you actually had to deal with. Uh huh. I remember putting like like 10 ex external SCSI drives and hooking them all up because that was the only po I only had one port left so I could I had space to store animation. It was yeah. insane, but it worked. So yeah. <laughs> it did the job. <laughs> well, I got probably let's see 46 or right, we'll hang out for another 10 minutes and we get a bounce cuz we burn some time. Okay. We yeah, we yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Vin, for waiting patiently. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah, no, I, I, I will not miss jumpers. <laughs> yeah. I needed a, a jumper for something not too long ago at work. I think it was one of the Optiplexes that... Um, because those stupid uh, proprietary connectors that they use for the front panel connections... 
One of those um, jumps that the uh, connector does is to know whether or not the cable that you have plugged in is working. So let's say you've pulled up, uh, pulled off the front panel and you're working on the motherboard and you just want to see like the power button. You plug in the power button, does it turn on? And then on screen it goes uh, something about um, could not detect the cable properly or cable failure or something like that. Mm. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> so yeah, just get one of those teeny tiny two millimeter jumpers, put it right in the middle mm -hmm. of the... Um, proprietary connector that they have turn it on it's like oh now all of a sudden yeah. the cable is just fine Dell yes <laughs> yeah that was a thing <laughs> <laughs> oh god I remember the early days of IDE when the uh, cable select just came out and everyone was kind of experimenting mm -hmm. with it and some drives work with it and some drives wouldn't was a pain in the freaking... A lot of them didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe that was me, because I was living life on the low end at the time. Mm. So it was just the cheap drives is what I had. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's funny, because I always found the Western digital ones had no problems, but sometimes the Seagate ones had issues. So funny. And that was in the days when Seagate was actually really good. That's what you used on the high end for SCSI drives in IDE. That's the thing. Seagate on, like, the super high end, they've always been all right. Yeah. Yeah, really good. It's yeah. just when you get to the consumer grade, it is crap. Yes. Yes, it they're is bad. Crap. Yeah. Their failure rate is so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get one of those uh, stupidly expensive um, hammer um, mm -hmm. hard drives that they have, the 15,000 uh, RPM ones. Yeah, I got a couple yeah, of Yeah, those. those are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> What do they call them? The Iron Wolves? The Iron Wolves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there are Seagate, the Barracudas, the old SCSI ones were incredible. Um, those things, well, they all still work. All the ones I have are still working <laughs> from the 90s. So. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, all of the um, Western Digital hard drives that I bought, yeah. they're all still working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mine too. That, that was... Yeah, with IDE, I would get Western Digital, and those those drives, my Pentium Pro dual processor uh, IDE drives are still working, so those are Western Digital. <laughs> What's Western Digital? Ven is wearing a power cord as a scarf. Yeah, I have SCSI in there as well. I had both IDE and SCSI because I run out of money, so then I'd have to have to get IDE drives, and it was so slow. <laughs> uh, I needed that constant bit rate which you didn't get from uh, uh, id mm -hmm. so used to be back <laughs> in the day if you needed a lot of storage and you really like scuzzy well you had to connect it mm -hmm. and we used external scuzzy cables to do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is that's what this big chungus is this is external yes. ultra wide scuzzy 2 this used to connect uh, from ah. my main boxes to a san that i built so <laughs> good times yes cool <laughs> i still i have them around around the the clothes hanger on my closet too i know ven keeps them in his closet around the and that's what i do <laughs> what i think you said this was a long time ago that in your in your closet, you know where you normally hang clothes, that you were hanging your SCSI cables around it. <laughs> yeah, you, you make remember. it sound like okay. a, yeah, the, I, <laughs> there's a repurposed um, tech yeah. closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. where all the cables. Well, go. that's that's what is in that closet behind me. That's uh, I I I kept the the pole in there for clothes just for my cables. <laughs> Oh, I threw out all the cables I don't use. I just kept those for sentimental reasons. <laughs> like I, I, have, I only I have, have this air. one. This was yeah. the in cable. This wasn't yeah. the out cable. The yeah. last external SCSI one I brought was a, um, a SCSI, uh, SCSI um, low voltage differential 320 for my 320 dri drives. <laughs> Yeah, jelly bean. Most girls have clothes in their closets. <laughs> but 
But yeah, I have to keep all mine around for all my vintage and, and old computers. So. I have to keep them around because I keep around other old stuff. It's not my, it's not yes. my choice. <laughs> I have to have parts to repair and recover. <laughs> And uh, yeah, my brother. One of these doors yeah. is all cables. Dude, that was kind of <laughs> yeah. like. I watched a uh, thing Metal Jesus did. I was like, what are your thoughts on the future of gaming not being in a uh, box physical form? I'm like, yeah, it's really going to cut back on your hoarding issue, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> brother had pasted an MFM drive. I have a, I still have MFM drives in my, my old XT that's out in the garage. <laughs> they probably still fire up just fine <laughs> don't use it it's out there yeah they're but... really loud and <laughs> <laughs> Pedro do you deal with any um, like power edge servers at work <laughs> there yeah. is one on the rack but it's not plugged in it's not even working anymore I think trying to get a feel for if this is a decent price T30 tower what uh, E3 1225 V5 yeah the quad core uh, yeah for 300 bucks that's not yeah. bad at all for Jitsi <laughs> bucks that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the the one we have that's in the rack, um, mm -hmm. it's got uh, first generation Xeon. I'm not putting a fucking rack in this house like that. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I drew the line at the audio. <laughs> But yeah, no, 300 for a 1225v5 is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got a Dell um, factory for high-end systems off Amazon before. They've been very good. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It's nice because you don't. it's not just eBay anymore. You can do it on Amazon. <laughs> and, yeah, and get if you're going to get faster. something, get it with a warranty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this this is studio equipment. This isn't. Yeah. In fact, that's where yeah, I have my no, students uh, go, who who don't have a lot of money to spend on new systems. <laughs> even the like the twelve forty five, uh, the E three twelve forty five V twos mm -hmm. are. Mm. If you want to buy just a processor on one of those, it's like a hundred and twenty pounds. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that that that's a pretty good price. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta see what the power is for that. Yeah. I'm assuming it doesn't have any sort of GPU or anything in there. Mm. <laughs> well, it's got two display ports and HDMI on the motherboard, so... Um... It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that That's just Dell. <laughs> the... No, that's... Uh... You'll probably be able to get away with, like, a 500-watt power supply. Well, I'm assuming it comes with one, Pedro. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that, that's, I just haven't went to the Dell site to look and see <laughs> what the actual draw is. Yeah, that's kind of what mm -hmm. I'm thinking, Jellybean. I want to see what it's going to actually pull under, uh, you know, about 50%. Oh, yeah, that's what I'd want to test it. 350, let's see. You're probably going to be pushing around 77. Well, the TDP on that Xeon is 77 or 85, one of mm -hmm. those. I don't mm -hmm. remember exactly. Yeah. Yeah, easily. <laughs> Ooh, there it is. Let's see. Power. Power. 290 watt power supply. So, yeah. And it is a Dell power supply, so it'll do. Yeah, it'll. Pretty clock good. higher. <laughs> yeah. If it clocked higher, we'd have problems. Well, I meant, I meant 
yeah the, it, it <laughs> you can get more out of it you know you could put a higher end gpu in there than than most, you can uh, actually push the 290 watts without it throwing a fit yeah <laughs> yeah which we don't want to do yeah we want to see how low we can go because we're very much approaching the power envelope for this room mm, yeah. oh. <laughs> on the two breakers. Yeah. yeah. This reason I picked this room is because I have it running the Tuta and I've already upgraded one of the breakers. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a, like a legitimate thing you have to think about in a house that's coming up on its 70th birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, What power supply do you have on the Threadripper? 1,000 watt. 1,000 watt. Do you have it on a, like, a surge protector with a switch that you turn on? I have two big honking ones. Yeah, okay. And I have three other ones near those. Well, if you are running off of the uh, auxiliary power supplies, yeah. Pager's like, okay. I bet he probably didn't take his kilovolt to each and everything when he was doing load testing before installing an upgraded <laughs> breaker. He's not, yeah, he's, he ballparked it. Yeah, that's Vin. Vin, Vin <laughs> works on, like, guesses. <laughs> yeah. Even 290 watts, even if it was, like, filling up all the capacitors and actually pushing those 290 watts in mm -hmm. there for just a second, yeah, it probably could mm -hmm. take it. Well, I don't think it's ever going to be under um, load. What I try to think about stuff like this, I'm like, okay, that'd be a good Jitsi box and yeah, <laughs> something else. You know, if you're going to spend the money, got to get more use out of it. Than... Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Apply for a job. Yeah, you should dare to apply for a job. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Give my approval. Apply, Linux new. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, yeah, I had. New York. Um, <laughs> I had yeah. Amazon Ireland at one point actually reach out to me over LinkedIn. It's like, yo, uh, we're looking for a Linux systems administrator. Are you interested? Ooh. It's like, yes, yes, I am. Did, can I work remotely? He's like, no, we need someone local. Well, then. <laughs> Yeah, they just didn't come back with a big enough number. <laughs> it was like the uh, entry... Um, yeah, uh, see, yeah, right. It's like, no. Entry level, yeah, salary. It I, was slightly less than what I'm making right now, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I straight up deleted my LinkedIn. I got tired of recruiters, man. That, like, I, I'm out of the game. You don't want me anyway. Trust me. <laughs> Oh, cool. What are you doing today, Jill? Oh, <laughs> I didn't have too many plans up to rest. I'm still feeling a bit sick. <laughs> my bit of my flu came back. Bit of the flu came back. <laughs> it is the season. Yeah, and I do want to, I need to go get Steve husband Christmas gifts, but I don't think I'm going to do that today. <laughs> You just ordered mm -hmm. online like a normal person. Well, yeah, some of them I, <laughs> I am, but there's I like to support local stores as well, so I do both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve's yeah. Chris, uh, Christmas gift is going to be Alexa inside uh, Alexa inside a Barbie. <laughs> yeah. <There> you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get him a. Uh... <laughs> like an STS scale model or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I I get him models a lot. <laughs> Make him feel like a real adult. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know Christmas is is that that's next month, right? Wait, November. Yeah. Yes, we are in November. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the same day as LWW. Yes. <laughs> 
I was noticing that the other day. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I, I don't really stay on top of like co-opted pagan holidays. <laughs> you have to excuse me. Like, oh come oh. on, it's a capitalist holiday. You <laughs> <laughs> hear when you bring that on. You're like, yeah, you know, Is that's because the Romans like were like, hey man, celebrate the thing. We've adopted Chris. Uh, now we're gonna do it on this holiday because <laughs> no one wants to do it in the middle of summer when <laughs> an event supposedly took place. Well, last year it was on Christmas Eve. And depending on what my families are, are doing, usually we do Christmas a day or two later or before, depending on what everyone's doing. <laughs> but we have a family coming in from out of town this time. My uh, mother-in-law, my sweet mother-in-law is coming in town. <laughs> it's better than like the hateful mother-in-law, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. She's wonderful. <laughs> I can't believe she's 80 years old now, so this might be one of the last times she flies out here. You got much faith in you. Oh, no, she's doing really, really well, but she doesn't. She She's having a hard time flying and stuff, so. Uh. Well, listen, if I could fly, I'd be happy, period. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Very beautiful people. Uh, yeah, Linux knew. Uh, Jordan would argue that. So. <clears throat> <laughs> Might want to work on a new one. We got to get out of here. Yeah. I got to go make a show. Yes. Yeah. Everyone keep Bye. being awesome. Matthew, okay. you have fun with your new Microsoft product. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> go install Edge. <laughs> Yay! Mm -hmm.